And that seems like it would be really useful information to determine out of this. Yeah. So I also wanted to ask sort of what what your background, you talked about the, the team you have, and you talked about some of the, the breakdown of what people's skill sets are, you know, researchers and coders and things. What is your background? How is this something that you got into doing? So I made the first version of the site. And at the time I was doing human-centered design thinking consulting, and I was TAing a coding class at Booth and at like a dev boot camp. And... Before that, I worked at a nonprofit in Chicago called Jane Adams Resource Corporation, and we focused on helping low-income people find living wage jobs and specifically training people in manufacturing jobs that paid really well. So at the time, I was basically helping my clients find meaningful work. What of your experiences prior to doing this, do you think was sort of the the most helpful thing in figuring out how to create something like this that could be helpful for voters? So when I was like an employment coach, so I was helping people find jobs. And one of the things I had to do was teach people who had never used computers before how to like apply for jobs online. And that plus the design thinking consulting that I was doing has been really helpful in terms of, so politics and voting in general is a space where people, they feel guilty when they haven't voted. Sometimes they feel ashamed that they don't know what they think they should know. And that that creates barriers for people wanting to find out more information. And when designing a site to help, we want it to be really usable. And we want it to be usable by people who are used to using the internet for everything they do, but also for people who maybe use it once a week. So I think that experience has helped me really get a sense of how we can make this useful for voters. Do you have any stats on what your user levels are right now? How many people are using the site? Okay, usually most of our users come 24 hours before election day. (laughs) This cycle in Illinois, we have already had half the users we had in 2016 in Illinois, which is incredible because usually there's a huge spike on election day and we have done zero paid advertising. So what's really exciting to us is that we see so many people sharing the site. We hear people saying, oh, I'm going to tell all my friends. And and we see it on Facebook and Twitter and through the emails through the, through the site. So we're, we're excited by the virality of it. Yeah. I, anecdotally, granted, I'm in Chicago and I'm in Hyde Park, which is, you know, probably the neighborhood that most knows about this site. But anecdotally, everyone I have talked to about whether they have voted yet has said, oh, yeah, I need to go look at ballot ready and see who I want to vote for helped figure out you know what my ballot is going to look like so it does seem at least around here to really be growing in popularity that's cool yeah so the website itself is ballotready.org do you also have social media presence yes on twitter we're at ballot ready and we have a facebook page too is there a way that people can know when Ballot Ready has gotten to their state and they can start to start to, to look at it for their elections? Yes. If you're not in Illinois, you can go to BallotReady.org, type in your address, and we will send you a reminder when we are actually live in your state. If people want to start letting their friends know about the site, sharing information about it in places where it is available, what's the best way to share that information? Is it to link to the website? Is it, you know, do you have posts on Facebook that can be shared? What's the best way for them to get the word out about that? There are two. One is follow us on Facebook and share our posts and Twitter, retweet our tweets. (laughs) And then this, this Third, I guess, is we have a blog, blog blog.ballotready.org, and we post articles on different local elections that are, our audience is election nerds, so if you fall into that category, you'll look. (laughs) And if you're listening to this podcast, there's a decent chance that you fall into that. (laughs) Yeah, I'm realizing that your researchers must go to Ballotpedia even more than I do. (laughs) That's a lot. (laughs) Is there anything else that you would like people to know about Ballot Ready or about sort of voting habits in general? The thing we think about a lot 
is across the country, there are over 500,000 local elected officials. We have yet to meet a person who has completed their ballot without guessing or leaving something <laughs> blank until creating Ballot Ready. So if you use Ballot Ready, you're good. And what this means is we're missing an opportunity to really use the power of our vote. And there's been so much activism in the last year. And we just, we often hear things like young people are apathetic. We are not built for young people. We are built for all voters because we know that even experienced voters don't know what to do all the time, but there's this sort of sense of shame around admitting that you don't know. And we want it to be really easy to be able to find more information so that people can talk about it and be more informed. Yeah, I have found myself recently asking everyone I see, have you voted yet? If you haven't voted in the primary, let's talk about these races that you might not know much about. So perhaps Ballot Ready can also help spark conversations among people. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Well, you know, you should think about behavioral research into shaming your friends into voting. No, no, we're going to get away from shaming. But <laughs> Facebook has played with that a little bit, right? On yeah. election day, being able to say, I voted, and then all your friends see that you voted and they want to vote too. And they've done studies over via mail that shows if you, it's called social pressure, if you tell a voter how they voted, how many times they voted compared to their neighbors, they're more likely to go vote. And it's possible that, that we could incorporate something like that. I wouldn't want to be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but if we could figure out a way to do that that was helpful and not creepy, I would we would do it. Yeah, some sort of like video game star system or something. Like, you've leveled up. You voted yeah. in every election for the past two years. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. I think Ballot Ready is really terrific and it was super easy to use and it was ready for me to use even the very early voting that I did. So I, in particular, am very grateful that it exists and I'm super excited that it's going to be in all 50 states. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Two Broads Talking Politics. Our theme song is called Sweeter Vermouth and is by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. It is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Our logo was created by Matthew Wethlin expressly for Two Broads Talking Politics and is copyright 2017. You can find us online at twobroadstalkingpolitics.com, on Twitter at Two Broads Talk, and on Facebook as Two Broads Talking Politics Podcast. You can email us at twobroadstalkingpolitics at gmail.com. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player FM, and iHeartRadio. If you would like to support our podcast, you can do so on patreon.com.